Hi, I'm Andrew James, Uppercut Games. Welcome to our first developer diary for Submerged. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the things I covered in my Tombow blog last week to do with painting, texture painting, and uh, vertex painting on the environment. So let's just take a look at this first building that uh, we released in the screenshot last week. Uh, one of the th one of the challenges we have here at Upcut is that we're only a small indie studio. And we only have three artists uh, on the team, and we're trying to make a massive city in an adventure game. So what that means is we can't create a lot of unique assets and unique models for the game. So we have to come up with other ways to create visual variation. So one of the first things we've done is to create materials to allow us to do texture painting on the surface of our meshes, which is a little bit like painting uh, a like you would with a terrain uh, on a, in another application. So with this building, I'll just take you through the process we used as sort of creating something from scratch um, for Submerged. So the first thing we're looking at is, this is sort of an iconic location in the game that the player will come back to over and over again. We want to make it uh, sort of feel important, not just from a gameplay perspective, but you know the visuals of the building needed to reflect that. So this is an important place in the city. And we also want it to be a landmark that stands out from the other buildings. So we started gathering a bit of reference for these clock towers that are um, usually on town halls or courthouses. And we grabbed a bunch of reference from different cities around the world. Some of you may recognize some of these. Um, these two are actually um, Upcut Games Space in Australia, and this is actually the Sydney Town Hall, and I think this is either Town Hall or the Post Office in Brisbane. And um, there was a couple of things we liked about these two towers in particular, the buildings, um, and the features of them. So I went from uh, those to gathering a bit more reference on these particular buildings. See here, this is the Sydney Town Hall, and obviously our game is submerged, and what I liked about this structure was there was this kind of classical peaked roof that we could actually use as a ramp for the player to get up on. If the water line was sort of along here, we can see the blue the blue line scribbled. And also I like the the um, you know the different steps in the building. Um, we went through some other. These are all a bunch of different um, architecture in e either Sydney or Brisbane here in Australia. Uh, this is a close up of the actual clock section on the Sydney Town Hall. And that's the overall building. Obviously, we didn't, we didn't want anything this intricate. I just really wanted to feature the tower itself, and you know, the rest of the building is is basically underwater because um, our world is flooded. Um, but I gathered, gathered a bunch of reference uh, of buildings in this style. You know, uh, something we really liked about this building in particular was the the columns at the top uh, and this sort of open section and. Obviously, the clock face inset into the wall um, is just another feature. So, I mean, a good thing about making a game is you can just decide which pieces of architecture you can mix, mix and match, um, and basically use this as inspiration and come up with your own interpretation. Uh, so, yeah, this is some of the reference we gathered uh, from buildings around Sydney, and I took that into Max and started to create our version of the tower for the city in Submerged and as you can see some of those elements let's change the user view some of those elements um, stayed like these pillars at the top of the tower here um, this element which is a little rotunda actually came across from the, the Sydney Town Hall which was a different building altogether this, this element up here then we've got clock, the clock face, but we used the long, tall tower. This sort of structure for the main building itself. As you can see here, the clock face is missing, but it sits there. And then this bottom part with the arches is actually ripped almost exactly out of the town hall in Sydney.
this section here. It's basically copied, but obviously there's not a window there you can walk through. So that was kind of the inspiration for this for this building. And once we had our version, this is a sort of work in progress, not the final one. Um, once we had our version made, the geometry on it, obviously I'm just, if you look at just this guy, that's a pretty basic box mesh other than the arches and it's just got a tiling a tiling map on it of some bricks I mean it doesn't look very next gen doesn't have a lot of detail on it you know so it looks fairly old school uh, when you import that asset into the engine here if I look at the, um, the raw asset It's actually got the vertex colors baked into it already. Um, I can fix that up by just dumping a black color on it. You can see that this isn't very interesting. Uh, it doesn't have much sort of surface detail. It doesn't really, your eye isn't drawn to any part of the building. There's no focus and it just looks pretty bo boring really. Uh, so the challenge was to find a quick way to add surface detail to this building because we just don't have time to go and um, build a whole bunch of sort of unique architecture that's all unwrapped with you know cool cracks in the building and edges and all that sort of stuff that a, a larger studio might be able to do. Um, just quickly before I go on to that, I just want to talk really quickly about these details that... Um, just undo that these details that we created for the trims in the building and uh, I actually bought the high poly models and baked these off I bought these assets from Turbo Squid because uh, this is fairly standard classical architecture type stuff you've got these little trims got these little uh, end pieces Got a classical pillar, um, but really none of none of this is unique to our game. It's not like uh, anyone's concepted or designed, um, you know, what this stuff looks like. Um, it's been around for, you know, so, sort of um, over a century. This type of architecture, and I think we paid like sixty or seventy dollars from Turbo Squid and just bought these models because um, I'm not going to spend time in ZBrush or Max modeling all these little normal map details. Uh, but it is important to have that sort of detail if you're trying to make a you know a next generation game but um, you want to save time and not have to actually model all that stuff yourself even this actual brick texture I bought um, from Turbo Squid it had already had the high res normal maps created for it and the diffuse texture and then I just sort of augmented it and um, edited it for our choice for our um, for our purposes and you know really that just saved us a bunch of time and for the small amount of money it costs it's definitely well worth the, the time you get on to just start you know move forward and make other things and start working on other things so I have a quick look at the material we've created we've actually got a small number of instance materials that are used on all of the geometry so the uh, the line here these these trims the bricks uh, the pillars all of these trims actually all just use one single material that's instance and then they have different diffuse textures and normal maps uh, but the materials are set up once and then we just reuse it over and over again on all the different assets uh, I'm not going to go into the, the you know the low level details of what's inside that material it's probably a post for another time but I can give you a quick look at the properties of it which is we have our diffuse texture we have our normal map uh, we have three channels that we paint on the texture, on the, on the surface. We have this damaged tex damaged uh, surface, which has its damaged diffuse texture and normal map. And then we have a mask. And this mask controls how those different textures are blended together. Uh, I can give you a quick look at that. Here, if we view the different channels, the red channel, that's the glossiness of the actual surface. So how much... Uh, how smooth the surface is and that controls how much light is reflected off it and 
how, uh, how much of the uh, reflections and uh, specular happens. The green channel is the glossiness of the damaged surface. So it's roughness, sorry, not the glossiness, the roughness. So it's, it's a, there's a lot more white there, so it's actually a lot rougher, it's less reflective, um, less smooth. And then we have this blue channel, and this channel controls where those two textures blend together and where the moss grows on the surface. So in the black um, is where the moss will grow first, and then it'll slowly bleed out and grow out to the white surfaces. And so you can see that if I go into here and I want to paint some moss on the corner of this building here, it doesn't just paint in a linear, that's the green channel we're using, uh, it doesn't just paint on in a linear way, it actually appears in the cracks of the bricks first, and then it grows and fills in the surface. So you get a lot, more, a lot more detail and you get some nice profiles and a contrast from a distance as well as the moss sort of grows across the surface. And then if I choose the red channel, which is our damage channel, I'll just fill that in absolutely solid here in this wall. So that's just a, a much darker brick texture and it's also much rougher. It's not as reflective. So it's worn down over time. As you combine those three things together, you can get some pretty cool effects. You can put damage where it looks like the water damage or the uh, this is where you can go in and you know use a, com a combination of colors. Like this color will give you a little bit of damage and also a little bit of uh, the moss over the top and so yeah you can effectively paint this like you would paint a terrain on a, uh, in a game level and create a sort of quite fast and easily create a lot of visual variation like I can basically make each side of this tower look different by quickly uh, quickly painting the different colors. You know, this side can be quite overgrown. Overgrown in green. This area along here with the vines, it's all green underneath that. But then the bottom of this bit here, a bit more green around where the vines are growing here. And then there's damage all around the corner of this, this area here. Yeah, so that's a quick look um, at how we implement basically surface painting using Unreal 4 for Submerged. Thanks a lot and we'll talk to you again next week.